Hi, my name is Tony Kovach, and I'm the artist in residence at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia. I want to welcome you back to our series of instructional videos for the piano accordion. In our last lesson, we learned how to spell and perform a major nine chord. Today, we will add a new chord to our vocabulary, the dominant ninth chord, and use it to play the classic jazz tune, After You've Gone. Our song of the day is in G major, so let's quickly review that scale. Today's chord, the dominant 9 chord, is similar to the dominant 7th chord we learned several lessons ago, so let's quickly review that chord. The dominant 7 chord is a major triad that has a minor 3rd on top. That's 3 half steps. 1, 2, 3. Therefore, a dominant 9 chord is simply a dominant 7th chord with the 9th scale degree added. Remember, when we use the term G9, we assume that it's a dominant 9 chord. Our song of the day uses a G9 chord, which is G, B, D, and then we add F as the 7th and A as the 9th on top. Since we can assume G will be played by a bass button, we're left with B, D, F, and A. To cover all five pitches, we will need to do some chord combining. The solution is to play the triad G, B, D with the G bass and G major chord buttons, and to cover the extensions F and A with the D minor chord button, which just so happens to be in the neighboring row. Notice how similar this is to our voicing of the major 9 chord. The only difference is that the major 9 chord used a D major, and the dominant 9 chord uses a D minor. A common feature of our song of the day is going to be to play four chunks of G major 9, followed by four chunks of G9. Another common feature of our song of the day is that chords move by descending fifths. In other words, we will often move from row to neighboring row towards the flat side of the instrument. In one passage of the song, we're going to play four chunks of A9, then we go down one row, and we play four chunks of D9, same shape. Then we're going to go down another row, and we're going to play four chunks of G major 9, followed by four chunks of G9. All of this should come in handy in our song of the day, After You've Gone. We're going to start with the left hand today. In our version of After You've Gone, we're going to play two chunks per measure. You'll notice in the first section of the song that the chords change every two measures. We're going to start by playing C major to C minor, G major, and E7. So we start with C major, C minor, G, E7. The next four chords of the song are going to move through a descending fifths sequence. We just played E7, so now we're going to play A9, then D9, then G major 9, and then pull your index finger back and play G9. So the entire A section goes like this, C major, C minor, G, E7, A9, D9, G major 9, G dominant 9. In the B section of the song, the first four chords are identical to the first four chords of the A section. So that's C major, C minor, G, and E7. And through the rest of the B section, the chords are going to change every measure, which means we're only going to play two chord chunks per chord. The next line is A minor, E7, A minor, C minor. A minor, E7, A minor, C minor. Then we're going to play G, B7, then E minor 7, and A7. Notice the pattern for the minor 7th chord is that you're going to play the major chord button that is three rows beneath the fundamental bass button you're playing. The last four chords that we covered were G, B7, E minor 7, and A7. The next line is G, E7, A minor 7, and D7. At this point, we're going to play a G major 9 chord for two measures and then a G dominant 9 chord for two measures. So let's go through the whole chord progression for the B section. Notice how many times we move in a descending fifths sequence. 
C. C minor. G. E7. A minor. E7. A minor. C minor. G. B7. E minor 7. A7. G. E7. A minor 7. D7. G major 9. G dominant 9. So let's talk about the right hand. The first phrase of the song starts with your thumb on E. Notice that rest right before the A. Rest. That rest is going to be a common feature in many of the phrases of the song. For the next phrase, start with your thumb on E. Then shift down to D. Here's the entire A section. The first two phrases of the B section are identical to the first two phrases of the A section. The next part of the B section coincides with the section in the left hand where the chords are moving more rapidly. You're going to start with your pinky on C. Notice I play the D sharp with my thumb and then slide it onto the E. Here's that phrase again. The next phrase has many sharps that are not in the key but add interesting color. Notice I slide my thumb again, I start on the A sharp with my thumb, and slide it to the B natural. Here it is again. And the final phrase starts with your thumb on D. Shift down. Here's the entire B section. And one last thing I want to mention is that playing a G dominant 9 at the end implies that you're going to repeat and go back to the beginning. The very last time that you play through the song, you should stay on a G major 9 chord. Let's put it all together. Join us next time as we continue to expand our chord vocabulary by learning the 7 flat 9 chord. Thanks for watching.